Okay, we're going to tie the traditional English wet, the dunk curled, which I use consistently on the point. Uh, I don't, um, I don't <coughs> fish it on the dropper. Sometimes I'll fish it in the middle, but 99.99% of the time I fish it on the uh, out on the point. Uh, and and I'll have other flies, particularly a, um, if it's that time of the year, I'll have a um, mallet and claret maybe in the in the middle and. That our favourite uh, on the top, you know, a, a fly that pushes a lot of water. So, all right, okay. So, I'm just using uh, 80 black thread, and for for the purpose of this tying, I, I'm tying these in a 10, so that it's easier to film and see. Now the tail, I just use a little bit of the crest. If it's too much, you can take a bit off it, but it's not too bad. Now, the secret is, if you don't want the tail to, to cock too far up, you just come back a little further on you with your thread, and that gets it into the right round about the right position for you. Mm. Right? Takes a little bit of that. Because it's got a tinsel body, I like to put a bit of gold wire ribbing in it to give it a bit of strength so that uh, you're not using one, one fly per fish. Okay. Tie that in. And the body is just a, a very thin piece of gold tinsel. I don't think, I don't know how many people now fish English wets, but I'm a, I love English wets, I reckon they're great. I'm just overlapping those. You can either overlap them or come back and do a second. Leave yourself a bit of room at the head. This is just to bulk the body. Yeah. yeah, I'm just building it up there, making sure it's it's nice and you can use you can use thicker, uh, wider material if you want to. I, I find you get a better cover coverage with a thinner material. Okay, and all 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 your all your wire is is a is a strengthener, so you don't have to worry, you can go the opposite way if you want to, or the same way, it's completely up to you. And just space your turns up there. Okay, that's the basis of the fly. Now, it's, some books will do it with a throat hackle. Some be, pe sometimes I do it with a full palmet hackle. I like it with a throat hackle. Um, it's only my preference, but that's that's just me. Um, but okay, so just take. A, now I don't know how. I don't know how oh, you guys do your, this is just a, an orange hackle, poor quality, dead set poor quality. Get rid of the fluff off the bottom of it. Now, some people have got different methods of doing a throat hackle. I'll show you the way I do it. I think it's easy. It gives you a fairly good, some people will put some yeah. fibres in, mm. down around it. I, I think this method is easier. So just wind your hackle on there. Now it doesn't look much like a throat hackle, does it? Well, that was lucky, wasn't it, eh? First blue went right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thanks very much. I've never seen hackles trimmed like that. <laughs> I've never seen hackles cut off like that. That was impressive. <laughs> that was a pretty good one, wasn't it? It's like catch and release, long distance. <laughs> okay, now, that's it there. Wet the fingers. Wet the hackle. And just push it down. Okay. Now, I'm just going to cut back over it a little bit. Oh. It's a good idea, that. Sometimes you can put a paper clip over them, you know, with a bit of rubber on it yeah. and a hold over it, and that will push all those fibres back for you. But you don't... Look, it's only a throat hackle. Now, this is the, this is the bronze mallard. It's the shoulder, and, and that's what I like to use. Some people use wood duck, but I just like to use that. It works out very well. Get rid of the fluff off it. Sorry. I like to just put my fingers on it and level the, level it out a little bit, right? Yep. Okay, I come into there, right? Hold that, bring the other side over, and that's it there, right? Now what I usually do is get a length, you know, just short of my tail. That to me, I'm, I'm quite happy with that, it's probably one, one and a half times the hook shank, right? There again, the old pinch and hole method again. And they're not a difficult fly, are they? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, I just learned a new way to put my jacket wings on. Yeah. <laughs> eh? <laughs> hey, that's just come from the as you know, you just work from the eye back to cover up your... Now, if that fly had a fault, or got a fault, my hackle probably could have been a little longer, my, my throat hackle, but I'm quite happy with it. It's nearly back to the tip of the hook anyway, so I'm mm -hmm. quite happy with it. And it, it is a fly that works particularly well with jungle cock, so we'll whack it on. You can use a substitute. The other substitute that I quite often use quite regularly is uh, a goose bite. Cut it and put that on. So we pop that on that side. Camera can't see that, unfortunately. See the next one. Come fairly loose on it. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Better? Yeah. Okay. Just sit him there. Now the, the thing is with this, it's like when you're doing a, a lot of feathered fly, don't crank the daylights out of it early, just wind yourself up to where you want to be. I want to get that level, so I just pull it back a little bit, and then all the strength is up the front of the first turns, and then it won't splay out at right angles on you. Okay. There's one turn of thread there, not quite right, but we won't worry about that. Okay, and that's that's it, fellas.